Good morning, folks. There was a beautiful magnetic surge on the Earth-facing side of the sun yesterday. Umbral and coronal fields entangled and some tiny filaments went off in chain reaction style, but mostly they collapsed rather than ejected outward. There was a simultaneous eruption just behind the limb as well, another example of the Earth-facing quiet where our star will fire in any direction but ours. These events indeed occurred right as that sun-diving comet reached perihelion and disintegrated, a potential trigger event. And speaking of streaking objects in the sky, don't forget the geminid meteor shower is picking up. It peaks about three days from now. Go out and see it if you can. Looking at the sunspots, we've had a quick jump up in number, but the flaring stays away due to lack of magnetic complexity. We've got multiple active regions, and while almost all have solid beta complexity, both positive and negative umbras, they are either disorganized or spread, leaving the magnetics unable to mix about. Perhaps we'll also take an eye way north for that incomer. The solar wind speed in yellow its dropping out now. Magnetic instability disappears with it. Last night, the filament amidst the coronal hole began writhing about, but it has settled back down this morning. Very surprising. As for the coronal hole itself, we still show tremendous power to the main bulges of this opening, and as most of you know, it ramped the earthquake watch upon facing us. Despite the readings initially around 6.8, and with a peak at 7.0, the readings had a huge range, and the USGS settled on 6.1 for this quake in Taiwan. Quick apologies on last night's evening news, I forgot to include the link to the moon phases for 2015. It's linked for you below now and has a ton of good information. Today's top story, Rosetta Analysis sets off a bomb in settled science. Looks like comets like this one did not provide Earth's water. Scientists are now scrambling, tossing a slew of new theories out there, but I might suggest our star water hypothesis from last year. I've yet to find anyone willing to challenge the principle there. Star water is by far the most watched series at suspiciousobservers.org. It's over an hour long and is a top recommendation. Got some footage in from these terrible Gaza floods the last week and a half. 100,000 homes destroyed as the strip became populated by sewage and rising water rather than gunfire. Speaking of rain, this is the measurement mission's take on the Philippine typhoon, linked for you below. You can see that the storm is just about at the Vietnam coastline now. we got another one forming in the East Indian Ocean. In the U.S. and Canada, the story is record precipitation. In the east, we've got a major counterclockwise spinning low just exited the land and driving its freeze down the western side. Major winter storm warnings in the northeast. Out west, that system is dancing around looking for a spot to make landfall. Meanwhile, the clouds and rainfall continue to inundate these areas. East, west, and even south central where a gulf flow brings heat and moisture into Texas for some storms keep your local forecasts handy. Only one thing catches your eye here in Europe, that big low cresting its convergence well onto land now. It's not the only place it will rain or thunder, but it is the most significant and disruptive area tonight. The story here is convergence. A low around New Zealand creates the convergence line, while another one between nations puts its collision points back up through the last few days warning areas. The clouds pop quickly, and the systems are kind of taking their time to move on. The Mobile Observatory is in Tallahassee today from 3 to 6 p.m. These events have been outstanding, and we hope to see all local observers out there if possible. Details on this and all of our stops can be found at observatoryproject.com. We've got shots of our star to close. It's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.